If you thought my last video was dark, then baby, please don't fear the Reaper, as this week I show you how to paint the Eldari Long Range Specialist Dark Reapers. Welcome to the Painting Coach. The first thing we'll do is prime the model using Chaos Black and then add a very thin layer of Abaddon Black all over. We're going to start with the bones, so the first thing we're going to do is take some Zandri Dust and paint all those bone areas. Now you will need more than one coat, so just take your time and make sure you get really good coverage. To brighten that Zandri dust up and get the base of the bone colour, we can use a Shabti bone. Now again, take your time and use a couple of thin coats to get a really nice smooth layer as we paint the face mask and the helmet. The final highlight on all of the bone is with some raised bone, so take your time, make sure you've got a really good point on your brush, and just focus on catching those raised areas, such as on the face mask, around the eyes, and around the mouth detail, and on any other bone areas, such as the raised ridges on the skulls. To add a little bit of depth back in, what we'll do is take some Agrax Earth Jade and use this just to form the shape of the masks. So where we've got some borders, we're going to paint it into there, and we're going to use it on the side of some of the decoration, just to add a little bit of interest. We'll paint the leather next, so we're going to base it all using Rhinox Hide. We're also going to base any gold elements, such as the soul gems using Rhinox Hide, because it's a great colour to get the gold looking fantastic. When that Rhinox Hide is dry, we're going to highlight it all using some Gawthor Brown. Now this is a really easy, simple step, so make sure you've got a good tip on your brush, and just use it and drag it along the leather parts using the shape of the model to get a really nice crisp highlight. As their base, let's do all the gold next. So the colour we're going to use is Liberator Gold, and this is a real simple technique. All we're going to do is paint over those bits of Rhinox Hide we painted around the surrounds of the Soul Gems. We'll do the Soul Gems next, and to do this we're going to base all of them using White Scar. Now you may get away with one thick coat, but if not, don't worry about putting a couple on there. Just try and leave a slight line between the White Scar and that gold surround. We'll finish those Soul Gems using Pterodon Turquoise, and it's a real simple technique. All we do is paint it over that White Scar. Just take your time and make sure you don't get any of it on the gold. While that White Scar is on the palette, it's a really good time to maybe paint in these eyes, so just take your time and get a good crisp white highlight. You want to leave that dark area around the edges where you can, because that will really help the effect. We'll move on to that big weapon next, and the colour we need is Galvorback Red. Now Galvorback Red doesn't cover fantastically well, so you will need more than one coat. I was lucky I got away with two, but don't be surprised if you do need three. I then take some Drakenhof Nightshade and use this to shade parts of the weapon. Now I'm looking for those areas that are going to be in shadow as well as some of those recesses. I'm not going to paint the whole thing, I'm going to be very specific about where I put it. The first highlight I'm going to do is a 50-50 mix of Galvorback Red and Emperor's Children. This will give you a mid-pink kind of colour. What we're looking to do is just catch the edges of the weapon, so make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, and just use the tip and drag it along the edges to get a really nice crisp highlight. Finally, we'll take some Emperor's Children and we'll use this to do some spot highlights on the real sharpest edges and corners of the weapon. Again, take your time, make sure there's not too much on your brush, and just add it sparingly. We'll paint the helmet plume next, as well as any wraps and ribbons on the model, and the base colour we're going to use is Screamer Pink. Now, I'm using it fairly thick and it's going on okay, I'm not losing any detail, but if you feel you need to go a little thinner, just check, take your time and build that colour up. Again, we'll use Drakenhof Nightshade to add some depth to the hair and those wraps, so just use it fairly sparingly and focus on those real deep areas. Don't worry too much about painting the entirety of the part. We'll do that first highlight using Screamer Pink, and in terms of the plume on top of the helmet, we're looking to catch those strands of hair, so just use the side of your brush to get a nice crisp highlight. And similarly, when it comes to the wraps, we're looking to catch the top and the bottom using the darker colour in the middle. We'll finish these areas using Pink Horror in the same way that we used the Scream of Pink in the last stage. What we're looking to do is catch those prominent areas to get some nice, crisp, sharp highlights that really make these parts pop. To finish up and get a really nice effect on the eyes, we're just going to take some Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint and use this very sparingly over that white and black outline we previously painted. The last thing we need to do is paint the armour, so if you haven't already, go back in with some of Bad and Black and fix any mistakes you've made. The first highlight we're going to do is with Ash and Grey. Now I've thinned this down quite a bit with water, and when I'm putting it on the model, I'm going to make sure I touch my brush on some paper towel first to take off all of the excess moisture. This means they get a nice crisp edge highlight using the shape of the model, but that it also blends into that black undercoat really nicely. To make that armour pop, we're going to take some Dawnstone, and in a very similar technique to what we've used across the rest of the model, we're going to make sure we've got very little on the brush, and we're going to use the tip and drag that along those really sharp raised edges of the plastic, and that's going to give us a nice crisp highlight. Again, focus on those areas that face upwards, and if you make any mistakes, you can always fix it with some Abaddon Black. 
And the last highlight we're going to do is going to be with Administratum Grey. Now, this is a real bright grey and it's quite stark in comparison to the rest of the model. So what we want to do is look to put this just on those really sharp edges, those corners, those parts that are really going to catch the light. So take your time with this, work your way around the model and just use it as sparingly as you can because it's always easier to add more if you need it. And there we have it. This Dark Reaper is done and ready for some long range damage. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, leave a comment, make sure you check out my other content and I will see you next time.